Hey, greetings everyone. Dan here, and I have a video for you that is actually a response to one of my YouTube friends, Shadow Facts One. Um, Shadow Facts One, I would like to thank you very much for the comments that you made on a video I posted earlier in the week, and I wanted to address uh, those comments that you made in this video because you raised some really dynamite points. Uh, as they relate to self-storage auctions. Shadowfax1 was afraid that perhaps I was not casting self-storage auctions in the proper light uh, insofar as the work that's involved in attending storage auctions and the time involved in uh, uh, going to auctions and, and dealing with all the stuff that you pull out of a, a, you know, the abandoned units that you buy. So I just wanted to address some of the things that uh, that was raised by uh, Shadow Facts One. Um, I live, first of all, I live just north of New York City in a, a, a small city called White Plains. And uh, this is one of the most densely populated areas in the entire country. When you consider Connecticut, northern New Jersey, the five boroughs of New York City, Long Island, um, I live in an area where there is very, very stiff competition for virtually everything, not the least of which are storage auctions. Sometimes I, I attend auctions in the Bronx that see 40 or 50 other participants. So I just want you to know that, you know, I face no shortage of competition when I attend uh, the store, you know, the auctions that I go to. And uh, Shadow Facts One had also raised concerns about Craigslist, you know, the, the merchandise, the things I list on Craigslist. Now, you know, again, living in such a densely populated area of the country, there's tremendous amount of um, competition on, tr on Craigslist also. Now when you're dealing with these levels of competition, both for the auctions and to liquidate your goods, it's just a matter of stepping up your game. Um, you know, and you're going to invest a lot of time and effort into attending storage auctions. Sometimes you'll go to, an, go to an auction between getting there, waiting around for the auction to start, the actual auction process, snipping locks and looking at lockers and waiting for everybody else to have their look at a particular locker. Sometimes there's 10, 12, 20 lockers available. You know, by the end of the day, you've chewed up your entire day going to a storage auction, and sometimes you leave empty-handed. That's just part of the game. And when you buy a locker, when you buy an abandoned storage locker, you've got to deal with everything that's in there and pulling out all that stuff, sorting through it, separating the garbage from the stuff that's worth selling, from the stuff that you might not want to donate. It's a lot of work. So Shadow Facts 1, you're absolutely correct. There's a lot of grunt work that goes into self-storage auctions. But one thing I do take exception with is uh, Shadow Facts 1 had made a comment that making money with storage auctions is not what I crack it up to be. And I take exception with that. Now in this auction, or one room for example that I bought last week at an auction in the Bronx, I found this vintage Raleigh Flex camera. This camera was one item in a room where I found all sorts of other really great antiques. And I sold this camera uh, just the other day, two days ago, three, day ago, three days ago, on eBay for $580. I bought the room for $185. Just this one camera, I sold for $580. Here is a uh, picture of a screenshot that I took of my eBay selling account. You can see here is the uh, Raleigh Flex, Flex camera listed. Um, my price was $580. And for those who are not familiar with eBay, this dollar sign right here indicates that the item was paid for. You know, now listen, don't get me wrong, the 80-20 rule certainly applies when you go to uh, storage auctions. That says that 80% of the value that you get from storage lockers is going to come from only 20% of those that you buy. So think about that. Out of every 10 storage lockers you buy, 8 of those 10 are either going to be shitty or they're going to have little or just marginal value. Only 20% of the lockers you buy, meaning 2 out of the 10, are going to offer you some substantial value. And have no doubt about it, I've purchased my, my share of crappy lockers. But also in this game, you've got to roll the dice. You cannot be afraid to um, take a gamble, take a chance on a locker. Sometimes your gamble is going to come up a winner, sometimes it's not. But that's all part of the game. So anyway... Shadow Facts 1, honestly, I really appreciate your critique of that prior video and thank you for providing the inspiration for this video. 
And I would also like to invite anybody who's watching this video, let me know what your most burning questions or concerns are about storage auctions. Do you think I'm full of shit? Do you think I provide great information? What are your biggest challenges when going to storage auctions? What are some of the questions that maybe I can help you answer? Please comment below. Comment below. Let me know. And uh, I will, you know, provide responses and hopefully good advice in a future video. So that's it for now. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I ask that you please subscribe. If I provided some decent information for you in this video, please click the like button. Uh, comment below. Again, if you talk to me, I promise I will talk back. And come and friend me on Facebook at facebook.com slash awesomeauctionprofits. I thank you all very much. It is Friday, so I'm wishing you all a great weekend. Until next time.